We are now officially live. Hello, everyone. Welcome to our NHK Trophy uh, recap stream. We are excited to be joined by Mikhail Svetsky, um, three-time Junior Grand Prix gold medalist, two-time German national champion, and soon to be Junior Grand Prix finalist in a couple of weeks. I'm very excited to be skating in Beijing. Hello, it's me. <laughs> welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank um, you so much for having me. Of course, we're so excited that you said yes. Um, I'll try and vamp a little to let people um, come in. Already Amy saying hi. Welcome back, Amy. I'm going to say a quick thank you to anyone who has subscribed recently because we finally passed 1,000 subscribers, which was our goal for the uh, the Grand Prix streams. <laughs> yeah, thank we you. Can finally, we can finally monetize ourselves a little bit and get some, <laughs> get some change. <laughs> the change that it will be because we don't get a lot of viewers. <laughs> uh, oh, I like I like the comment that just came in. Looking Jonathan. forward to getting into the weekend's drama because we've oh. had a lot of controversies this Grand Prix. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's gonna be a good one. Laura, welcome, Laura. Um, yeah. Laura, so, oh, I'm yeah. just gonna ask Mikhail, have you ever um, competed in Japan? No, never. But I really want to, because all the competitions seem very well organized. The crowd seems to be having so much fun, and that's exactly what what, what you want as a skater. You want the crowd mm -hmm. to be having fun. You want to be the crowd to be enjoying you. And then it's just so much easier to skate if you see, like, it's just so much easier. Yeah. I love that. I felt like the crowd was clapping to everything. And I was yeah. so impressed because it was a big crowd and they were not mm -hmm. terribly offbeat. So I was, I was very impressed. That happens <laughs> so often. But they, they managed <laughs> to do it. They managed to do it. My favorite thing is when crowds start clapping in, like, one part and then just slowly have to fade out the clapping. Because... <laughs> Like into a, like a really slow changes. bit. <laughs> oh, it's so funny. Awesome. So, um, what did you think of the competition overall? We there was obviously a lot of unexpected wins. It was really interesting. Like so much drama, so like so many controversies. Um, I thought it was really like the field was really really strong. Uh, the ice dance field was really strong. Uh, the men's. I feel like. Uh, women's were lacking a little bit not sure I'm, I'm not the biggest like uh <laughs> single skater professional but um i feel like we've had stronger fields in in in, in the other grand prix in the women's section um and the pair skating was also really well but um overall really great competition as i said very well organized the stream was super good uh the crowd was amazing uh probably phenomenal atmosphere I, I would have loved to be there in person it's probably so much better but yeah overall really really great competition I guess yeah. uh, we'll jump into the women's event so winning gold medal for the US was Ava Marie Ziegler uh, silver medal also for the US Lindsay Thorngren and the bronze medal for Belgium Nina Pinzeroni this was not a podium people would have expected before this competition. <laughs> I will I say that I did not have, I would not have expected her to win, but I did pick both Ava and Lindsay for my a, um, fantasy skating this week. So I did very badly <laughs> in every other category, but I actually did okay in women. Um, but it was fun to see them here because I saw them live in a small competition in August and I interviewed Ava then and talked to Lindsay some as well and it was cool to see they're both skaters that like did a lot of summer competitions they were ready really early on but then it hadn't like fully come together so it was, it was cool to see that they were able to do so well in the Grand Prix because I think with a lot of those skaters that are like the up and coming like US ones, they had to be really prepared early because they were hoping to get, I mean, Lindsay had two spots, but Ava didn't have anything when the season started and was maybe hoping to get a host spot. So like, it seems like some skaters are off to a slow start in the women's this year, but they're two that um, like they were doing domestic competitions like in July. Yeah. 
I also haven't heard a lot about them before. So it was kind of like not the first time seeing them because I, I think I saw them in juniors. I, I think I even saw them in person in juniors. Um, <laughs> but uh, so, yeah, so really like newcomers and for them to be on the podium, like in the I don't know if, if it's their first senior season. I'm not sure. Um, but for them to be on them. second. OK, yeah. but for them to be on the podium of a senior Grand Prix on their second senior season is amazing. Yeah, like I'm so happy. Also, for I think them to, uh, yeah. Lindsay had like an injury, like after you saw her at Grand Prix. I think she had like a back injury that uh, took her out of Shanghai Trophy and I think Autumn Classic as well. Um, I think she's but, also suffering from some injury right now because uh, she yeah didn't she skate sprained the ex her ankle. Exhibition, right? Yeah, yeah, she sprained her ankle before the short program. Oh. Um, so yeah, so the fact that she's managed to achieve this result when she's had some setbacks this season was great. Super great. Effort. Yeah, she has great programs. I especially love her short. Um, and it's you could really tell that she made the effort this season to try to not be seen kind of in the same light as a junior skater, but really trying to put herself up in a sort of as a as a senior to be in this same competition, the same conversation and um, as skaters like Amber or Isabeau, and it's interesting because she she's this, you know the same age, the same sort of came to seniors at the same time as Isabeau, and so did Ava, and all three of them are from New Jersey, um, which is also just funny to me that they're like, um, you know, they all and they all come from like good like training center, but not necessarily where as many of the top skaters have been training recently. So it's just interesting to see these like three very strong teenagers all coming out of the same, um, you know, more or less the same part of the US. Um, and they, but like, but Ava and Lindsay actually are training mates. They don't have the same coach, but they train at the same rink. And it was cool to see them like being really happy and supporting each other there as well. I also feel like um, when it comes to single skating, especially for me as an ice dancer, I feel like a lot of the times um, single skating lacks the artistry part of um, artistic part of figure skating for me personally. And I think that both Ava and Lindsay um, did a phenomenal job at like covering that part of figure skating as well as uh, the jump part. So that was yeah. that was really, really, really nice for me um yeah 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 i think that is something that nina can maybe improve on a bit i think she has good programs but not, not necessarily able to show them off as well as she potentially could do if she maybe had a couple of more years experience obviously she had um like she was supposed to make her grand prix debut last year and then had an injury that set her back so it's definitely it's incredible that she's made the final and also like two belgian women making the final um, on her first Grand Prix season, that's just incredible job. It shows off her technical skill, but it's definitely I think that's an area of improvement for. Yeah, but she's still young, so there's a lot yeah. of time. Spent. Yeah, yeah, it was interesting. All three of the, you know, I think they're three seventeen-year-olds. I think on the podium were close to, but um, <laughs> they were. Um, but I also agree about Nina. I think the most impressive thing for her was just that she's been able to have that consistency when so few of the women have been able to be consistent this year. Mm -hmm. Like you know, if everyone was at their best, she might not have been able to do this, but that's not a knock against her. I think it's kind of, you know, amazing that there's that opportunity and she is able to, you know, keep it together and not feel the pressure and, and go for it. Exactly. Um, we've got some love for Sandra Bessick's uh, choreography of Lindsay's short program. Um, Russell saying uh, they loved Ava's transitions from element to element. Uh, someone congratulating Mikhail on the Junior Grand Prix final. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> I have kind of a uh, funny story about Lindsay's short program, or at least it was funny to me, which is that when I uh, talked to her at the um, Cranberry Cup the, uh, competition over the summer, 
Um, and I'd asked her about her program and she had said, you know, oh yeah, well, the person who choreographed this told me this, this, and this. And so that's what I wrote down in the, and you know, we posted <laughs> on Twitter. Um, I was going to ask her, well, who choreographed it? But she was like, you know, already leaving back into the dressing room. We were, she, she was done, um, talk, done talking to me. <laughs> The next day, her coach um, came up to me and her coach, um, I don't know anything about her background, but um, she had a very intimidating to me, Eastern European accent and very, very, kind of very abrupt manner, which and she was saying, you know, you need to change your post. I was like, what? She's like, it's not like the person who choreographed, it's Sandra Bezik. And I was like, oh, okay, we will change it. Like, that, that is what Lindsay, I'm just, I was just saying what Lindsay said. You should have asked a follow up question. Okay, so it's just funny. I'm like, I'm. It's just, it's not something. That'd been me. I would have cried. <laughs> yes, it is. I would have run away and cried. <laughs> um, people are always so nice, and but I'm always so afraid that I'm gonna, you know, have said, you know, act, gone something wrong or said something, you know, that I wasn't posted that something wasn't supposed to be said or whatever. So I was just like, ah, oh, no, okay, of course, we will, we will post a correction. <laughs> Oh my God. There are a lot of coaches that are really sensible when it comes to those topics. <laughs> so, yeah. got to be careful sometimes, especially those <laughs> Eastern Europeans. <laughs> well, and it's also that, you know, if they, if you're going to go to a coach with that kind of rep, not just she's a fantastic choreographer and the work's good, but also part of the reason of going to a choreographer like that is that you get to say that you went to that choreographer and that have that, um, reputation boost also. So I got why they wanted to talk about it too. Um, but it was just, it was just funny to me. But yeah, I it definitely would love to see um, more of her, her choreography back in the field. The oh, yeah. other, oh, sorry, go ahead. No, I was just gonna um, point out a couple of people loving in. Uh, Yuna, I wanna say Aoki, um, Apologies if I'm mispronouncing that. Um, it was definitely a highlight of the women's event. And Jonathan was also agreeing she's a charming skater. Yeah, she did an amazing job with the the opportunity she was given. Obviously, she was the host pick. And I think a, a lot of people were kind of not dismissing her, but I think a lot of people wanted to see Reno again on the Grand Prix this year. Obviously, she only got one spot um, and kind of like maybe didn't think about the opportunity to see another skater like that was going to be there and she won lots of fans over in this competition i know that yeah she was great um i also wanted to talk about my who um i thought was um you know clearly is not at her full strength here um but i thought both her programs were fantastic and i really am looking forward to seeing more of her this season i really hope that she is able to, you know, fully heal up and that we'll see her healthy. But um, it was so nice to see her. It made me realize that I'd been missing her on the circuit this year. And um, I'm not always a huge Celine Dion fan and I would never have been like, she should skate to Celine Dion. But I think that that program mm -hmm. is actually really good for her. It like pushes her to be a little more extroverted than she is sometimes. Yeah. But she had such a lovely smile on her face as she was skating it that it just made me so happy. Um, I'm just... Uh, I really enjoyed that, you know, all technical stuff aside. Yeah, talk, so talking about that smile, um, I also feel like a lot of um, skaters, when, when they skate, they um, forget about, like, doing something with their face. Like, actually smiling at the crowd, smiling at the judges, or, like, doing different faces. They Sometimes they just focus on, like, doing all those upper body movements or, like, you know, different movements in general, but they, they forget about their face. And I, I think she did a phenomenal job at that. Yeah, agreed. That's a really great point as well. Because <laughs> you can always like tell when someone is concentrating to like yeah. land their jumps. And you can often see uh, if they have a layout that's like jumps and then the step sequence, just how free they look when they get to their step sequence. <laughs> like, yeah. oh, all the jumps are done now, I can have fun. <laughs> Happens exactly. so often. <laughs> And that really seemed the case with Wakaba here as well. I felt like um, she was, especially in the free skate, um, you could really see that that shift. And um, I, I got I posted on Twitter and then got some flack for saying that I thought that um, Wakaba's being underscored in PCS and that 
Um, I think that she would get uh, the kind of things that are her strength, I think get more rewarded in the men's discipline than in the women's in terms of some of the speed and power um, uh, rather than looking for sort of complexity or delicacy of movement, which she is not her strength. Um, and then everyone was like, okay, but what about Kauri? She's got the same things and she does well. And I was like, okay, that's that's true. Yeah, but, but I think Kauri did a question that proves the rule more than She the also other didn't way. used to. Like she used to be kind of middling around the field. Like she she pushed her way to the top of the field. She wasn't always been there. But like it's taken it took a while for her to get rewarded for those things. And, and I think maybe if Wagaba that... was more consistent, maybe, maybe she would have also been rewarded for those things eventually, but I'm not saying that Wakaba should be getting nines. I'm just saying that I think she's being yeah. consistently underscored for what she, she is. is doing um, and that she has um, some real strengths, particularly when she's, you know, having a good performance that she has good strength. You know, her performance skills are um, stronger than she gets rewarded for. I always enjoy seeing her even on a not as good day, um, but <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but that's also a little bit of the problem when um, when it comes to scoring in general, because um, for some reason, we don't know, but um, when you mess up um, the technical side of the program, the components also go down, like a lot. Um, let's say you have a perfect program, all the jumps are clear, you can get a nine. If you take, you take the same skater who messes up two out of three jumps and you get six and a half or seven at max. And I don't know, some may find it fair, some may find it unfair, but that's that's just the nature of figure skating. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think, I think I'm not in favor of it being a mandatory thing that there are deduction that you can't get above a certain PCS if there are falls, because I've seen programs where a skater falls, they bounce right back up, they're right back into it. And by the time the program's done, I'm not like, I don't remember that they've, fall and it didn't impact anything else and like yes they're going to get the negative for the fall and for that element but it does it didn't actually impact the rest and then there's times where the fall is incredibly disruptive to the flow of the performance um and like it that seems they shouldn't be um the same consequences for both of those things um because i also want to incentivize skaters to like bounce it right back up after the falls um, and not exactly. like scowl for a little while where they're stroking really quickly <laughs> to get back to where they were in the program. I've also definitely seen panels ignore that threshold of you're supposed to like give a certain amount of PCS if you fall in ice dance for the top teams in the world before though. And I think considering ice dance is the discipline where you are least likely to fall, the falls are a little bit more damaging and Maybe you should adhere to those rules and not just ignore them. Well, <laughs> it also depends on the reputation of the skaters, right? Yes. <laughs> yes, it does. I'm just thinking um, if there's anyone else in the women that we wanted to um, we wanted to talk. To. We haven't talked about um, any of the Korean women, um, and I. I always enjoy. Hainley skating, I did yeah, think she had a loss of stamina towards the end of the free skate, which is not necessarily usual for her. I think in terms of when she does like Four Continents and Worlds last year, she tends to have so much energy that it, it's still there by the end, but you could tell she was starting to like lag a bit towards the end and you could see the rotations were not yeah. completely there. So I think the result is fair. Although it's it's awful that she keeps coming fourth place all the time in the Grand Prix. I just wish she would make it to the podium. <laughs> it's interesting to me, and I know each skater has their own story of what's going on this season, but it was interesting that we didn't see any um, Korean women or Korean skaters, but any Korean women um, make it to Grand Prix podiums this year. And mm -hmm. given the overall strength of the field, that surprised me a little bit. And so it did make me wonder a little bit about, you know, how is their competition schedule impacting things? Are they all training in a, you know, in a different rhythm than um, some of the other skaters? Or is this, you know, is this just all coincidence of each um, individual athlete? But um, I don't know if you think there's anything that's going on across the field there. 
maybe they pushed themselves too hard last season. Like there was a big the push case. to get them to the World Team Trophy and, and get a good result there and had a very long season for some of them last year. I know Yellen finished mm. the year with an injury and had to have like not like surgery but a procedure done just after the season had finished, which I think probably slowed down her start for this year a bit. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Yeah. Um I was sorry that Leah Serna had such a tough competition after yeah. the festival in France. Um but yeah. Yeah. Um, I want to think battle there for who gets uh, the um, European spot between her and Lorraine Jim. Yes, it will. Um, I wanted to mention Anastasia Gubanova, um, who went from 10th in the short and uh, finished fourth in the free to, you know, finish sixth overall. I know we discussed her a bit last week as well. Um, newly engaged Anastasia I was going to say congratulations <laughs> on her engagement. <laughs> um but yeah i thought like that was a really great bounce back and it was very close um the scores were very close between her and uh yuna above so yeah just sort of she did well with that yeah it always amazes me when uh when people bounce back after a short like after a not so good short program um if you think back at like uh olympics 2018 nathan chen when he was like he plays, I think, 17th in the short program, and then he placed first in free uh, in free program. It always amazes me how they they keep their mental. They they don't break down after their short program and bounce back and try their hardest. And um, I love when they get rewarded, but um, well, sometimes it just it just doesn't. It's not enough. But well, yeah, yeah, definitely. It is really impressive, though. I think that maybe that feeling of pressure being gone a bit, that it's, you know, it's, you're not likely to have to, you know, you know it's not going to be perfect. So then exactly. you just go do the best that you can. I do think it's also a little bit interesting. And I think we might have talked about it before, but the pressure of someone like Anastasia, who was European champion last year, like, now coming into this season um hey and coming into this season like they have such they achieved so much last year and they now have to figure out how to balance that coming into a new season like the expectations that are on them yeah expectations can break a skater uh <laughs> it's the tough reality but um sometimes it's really hard to keep up with expectations but I think, I think they they're pr doing a pretty good job, and I and they're probably going to bounce back. Um, and during the rest of the season, um, I'll be happily watching them at, at Europeans for continents and worlds. Um, let's hope for the best. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we'll run through some comments before we move on to the next discipline. Amy saying, "Love." I think this is about Mai's uh, free skate. Yeah. Hope she gets well soon. Um, Emma Patrick Tran, <laughs> truth has so agree about no PCS deductions. Uh, let me see, my mask stopped working for a second. Um, it's a great one towards the end there, like. Oh, wait, this moment as well. Yelim taking out the board <laughs> with a triple triple. You had a great um, a great tweet about that, Sarah. <laughs> yeah, she the board should have moved for her. Um, yes. She <laughs> took out a bit of the paint as well, I think. I saw that. It, like, fell onto the ice. <laughs> um, but, yeah, it was interesting um, hearing sort of how she just basically had to ignore that. And I imagine that's hard. Like, it's always going to be in the back of your mind when you go back near there or have any other jumps near that um sort of section i was amazed she didn't fall or you know, that she managed to <laughs> hit the boards with her free leg and just keep going she's just like yeah just carry on it's <laughs> just like okay <laughs> i mean her, her opening triple triple combination is so huge to begin with it's, it's almost surprising that doesn't happen more often <laughs> maybe during practice 
Who knows? Bye, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, Helim took a more aggressive take on the touching the boards track. <laughs> I like that. That's good. Um, good that was what was the one you saw? That was the one. Oh, okay. <laughs> the one you just read. <laughs> um, so there was stuff on the ice and surprise they didn't stop her. Hmm. Maybe yeah. they just didn't see it. They might not have done. Because because the camera we're looking at is like right next to where she was. It's not really where the judges were. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Also, Don't skaters. Give the ice dancers ideas. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Next next season. <laughs> Breaking um, the board season. Yeah. <laughs> um I think we'll circle back. Somebody if... do like I was gonna say somebody do like a painter and decorator like <laughs> ice task program. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, so ice dance in uh, gold. We have Lila Fear and Lewis Gibson from Great Britain. Uh, in silver we have Shawnee Grenard and Marco Fabri from Italy. And in bronze we have Alison Reed and Solius from Bulavicius from Lithuania. And I probably butchered that name because I always do. I'm so glad <laughs> we have an ice dancer here. <laughs> what are your thoughts? Um, very tough competition, very controversial, especially when it comes to gold. Um, I've heard many opinions on the internet. I've read that um, many are very, very angry that the Italians didn't win. Uh, they're saying that the Brits are not on the same level. Um, I've heard controversies about the third place as well. Uh, that mm -hmm. the Finns should have been third and not the, the Lithuanians. Um, so, in my opinion, this this ice dance competition was uh, definitely one of the stronger Grand Prix. Because um, if you look if you look at just the points, we didn't have anyone below 100 points in the free dance, uh, which is a good indicator for it being very strong couples there. Um, I thought it was a really really interesting competition. Uh, I liked. All of the programs, I'm not gonna lie. Um, do you want me to get to the spicy topics? <laughs> <Of course. laughs> okay, so um personally, when it comes to gold, I think the Italians deserve it a little more. Not because not just because of their reputation, because many say that the Italians um only get the points uh, due to their reputation and the Brits are so much better than them. Um, I feel like um, the Brits, out of all the top couples, did the most improvement um, over last season. I feel like they've improved a lot over over, over the summer and I, I really love their programs this year. But I think that um, the Italians are just a little more clean and a little more... I don't know how you say it. it they're a little more polished mm -hmm. um, in all of the, in, in in both their programs, um, especially in the free dance. I know that many people are saying that uh, the Brits are have an ori very original program, and I agree. Um, it's 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 really refreshing to see a more original program in the especially in the free dance where everyone usually tends to take slower music, um, and just do slower programs overall. Seeing them is uh really refreshing and it really like brings brings something new into the field especially in 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 the like when it comes to the top couples because usually the top couples tend to take slower music show off their skating skills show off their their great body lines their uh, how, how parallel they are and um the brits take a completely different approach and i really appreciate that as well because that just shows that you can you can take a different route and still get to the same goal, still get to the top, still still be one of the best couples in the world. But I still feel like the Italians are a little bit more polished. And yeah, I'm not a judge. So maybe I, <laughs> I just see something they don't see or they see something I don't see. I don't know. But I feel like they're very close to each other. Um, It's not like the, the Italians are 10 points better than the Brits. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that they are a little higher for me personally and and yeah i think they they should have taken the gold in my opinion 
but I think I think Lila and Lewis um, also deserve the gold. But, mm -hmm. um, when it comes to third place, I'm I'm probably a, a bit biased here because I used to I used to train with the Lithuanian couple. They used to train in Oberstdorf, so I'm I'm really good friends with them, and I really I'm really really happy for them, especially because it's it's such a, a a historic event for them to be win uh, to be to be winning two bronze medals in one season at both Grand Prix. Um, really, really happy for them. And I I got to say, I love their rhythm dance this year. I, I feel like it suits them so much. It's it's literally made for them. Um, I do have to say that the, the, the Finns have really nice free dance this year, and it's probably one of my favorite free dances this year. And the, uh, the, the Finnish team is... A little bit stronger when it comes to to to, to the free dance, to to showing off uh, their skating skills and, and and how clean they are. But overall, I think the Lithuanians deserve the third place because I feel like the Finnish lack something in the rhythm dance. Um, something doesn't 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 fit them. I'm I'm not sure what it, what it, what it is. They're obviously really really good skaters, but I feel like. Um, the rhythm dance of the Lithuanians just outclasses the rhythm dance of of the Finns. A little bit more than they outclass them in the free dance. Mm -hmm. Whew, that was a lot of talking. <laughs> yeah, no, thank you. That was super interesting. I know I totally ag I agree about the, um, especially about the rhythm dances. I really love the Lithuanians rhythm dance, um, and I think they're one of the teams that's like chosen the, the like real '80s sort of hard rock um, theme that it really yeah. suits so well, um, and they're both mm -hmm. really into it. I'm just, I'm, I really enjoy that program for them. And I know a lot of people really like the Finns rhythm dance. It doesn't do much for me, um, but I hadn't necessarily loved their free dance, the Finns, when I saw it last week. But then seeing it again, I felt like I was able to appreciate it a lot more, um, which probably just had to do with like how tired I was when watching it or something, not about them, but um, I felt like it was growing on me. And in general, actually, I, I liked both of the Brits programs better this time. I feel like a lot of teams um, that I could see the improvements and just small things that were getting tightened up and the performance that was getting a little bit better and sharper um, for so many of the teams since the beginning, some of the programs that I was a little like, mm, when I first saw them, I'm liking more and that may just be that I'm, you know, succumbing to them. But like, I, I think that this is also as the teams get more polished, um, some of the concepts that might have not come across as clearly when it was a little messier are like really getting to appreciate it now. Have you seen the Finns in person? Yes, I saw them at Europeans last year, which was a... Um, a great moment to see them because they were being like they were skating their absolute best and the crowd was going completely nuts for them and so yeah. it was a they were really good then and i remember that um Alison and Solis were the couple that i didn't see in person because they kept skating right after <laughs> a team that i needed to go talk to in the mix zone and so i never saw them and so um it was kind of funny but i i was thinking about sort of the home europeans and how probably it it like the top four teams here are likely to be some, you know maybe the top four teams at europeans like hopefully unless yeah. unless the checks suddenly do really really well i don't know you know there's not like Sorry, i think yeah. this is yeah so i know it's never gonna be there so oh yeah, be an interesting, that will be interesting. Interesting spanner in the works, but um, I kind of, I kind of <laughs> hope that they get the home, um, you know, a medal at the home Europeans would be fantastic, just from a like emotional uh, fan sort of yeah, standpoint for, sure. for them. So I was glad to see them beat the Finns here, just for the sake of setting up that narrative. Um, all skating dynamics aside. Yeah. What I really like about the Finns, I, I saw them at Nibelhorn Trophy this year. When they get on the ice, you just don't hear them. They're skating and you don't hear them skating. And I just love that. Because, I don't know, it just, it just fascinates me. It, it's, it's, just, it's just like they're floating across the ice. Like, I don't know how they're doing it. Maybe they're just lighter than me. I don't know. <laughs> they 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 went on the ice, and the only time time I heard them was when they were doing twizzles. 
<laughs> Apart from that, I I just I I couldn't hear them. Even when the crowd was silent, there there was no music playing. And it was just the announcer announcing the points of the previous couple. You could not hear them skate, and that just fascinated me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's such a like interesting thing to keep an eye out for as well, Matt. To sort of see if that like is a visible difference as well. Not really it's just an audible difference oh it's just sometimes they have the mics like you can hear like the mics on the ice as well you can hear those yeah yeah yeah, yeah. but yeah. i don't know I, I was sitting in the crowd and all all, all the couples before it, like i didn't really he- hear the difference yeah. but when they got on the ice it was just absolute silence they were moving <laughs> across the ice they were skating they were doing like different turns and everything and you just could not hear them and that, I don't know, I, I felt something at that moment, which I didn't feel before. And that fascinated me. <laughs> yeah. really cool. With their, they carry that sense of sort of, of, of weightlessness. And it it's cool that that comes across there as well. I really um, love their final, I think a choreographic lift, I think is the final element in their free skate. Yeah. I, was, I was looking back at what I, I wrote down. I was like, that um, it, they have such interesting movements throughout the whole free skate. And I felt like this time I was just really appreciating each piece of it as well as the whole. Yeah, for sure. As I said, it's it's one of my favorite free dances this year. I, I just love the choreography. I just love the delicacy, the softness in their skating. And um, that free dance really um, emphasizes their their strengths and just hides their weaknesses a little bit too so i think that that their free dance this year is a perfect fit for them Mm -hmm. definitely what do you think about the italians rhythm dance i feel like that's very controversial topic this season too um one thing i saw them at lombardia trophy and um one thing that instantly caught me was their silver samba because when I watched the program for the first time, um, I was waiting for the silver samba to happen. Um, I I was watch I was watching with my girlfriend. And I was like, okay, when's the silver samba gonna be? I, I want to see because um, what, when they do something new with the rules, I I, I want to see how people implement it. So mm-hmm. I was waiting for the silver samba, and then they did the final pose, and I was like, where was the silver samba? <laughs> I didn't see it. <laughs> and when you implement, so I had to watch for a second time to even see the silver samba happen. And mm. I think when you implement something, because it's it's a choreographic thing, right? It's it's a choreographic mm-hmm. pattern dance, or I don't know how they call it, but um, the calling convention is weird. But yeah. um, it's a choreographic element, so it has to be implemented well into the choreography. And I think they did it the best this year, for sure. Mm. Um. Well, Apart yeah. from that, I don't think they have the most interesting rhythm dance this year. I think the rhythm dance from the Brits is definitely a bit more interesting. But um, my point stands. I think they're a little bit more clean, a little bit more polished. And I think they're very close to each other, the Brits and the Italians. And um, that's already a big step because if you compare them to last season, the Nobody was even comparing the Brits with the Italians. They're just two completely different worlds, two completely different uh, categories of points. And that they got this close and even beat them now is a huge step for the Brits. Yeah. And and I'm really, really happy for them. As I said, they did, I th- in my opinion, they improved the most over the summer from the t- top couples. And uh, yeah, I'm di- digressing. Uh, well, <laughs> what I wanted to say is um, I think the rhythm dance of the Italians is nice, but it's not my favorite this season. Yeah, yeah. I know I saw, um, I think Ben Agosto was saying that he thought it was too campy. And um, I actually disagree in that I enjoy the campiness that I kind of, I wanted someone to have a program that was, you know, sort of like what... Um, Gabby and Guillaume did with their fame um, rhythm dance a few years ago. I wanted someone to kind of go full like aerobics video. And and in some ways I kind of enjoyed that it was this team that I usually associate with being more lyrical that 
went into this sort of full campy mode. It's like, it's in that like watching your parents in the eighties kind of thing. Like it's a little like, it's a slightly embarrassing, but also like very cute. And I kind of have that vibe with them, which is funny. I'm like, they're my age. I'm not like, they're, they're so old, <laughs> but like, I just think that there's something about um, them in it that I under fully understand why a lot of people don't like it, but um, I kind of enjoy that they went with something that's a little weird and risky. Yeah, it's definitely out of their comfort zone because I think because they usually tend to take a little bit more, as you said, the lyrical uh, way. And it's definitely something new for them. But I think they managed to do it very, very well. And I love their free dance. I think it's I think it's my favorite yeah. of the season. I was thinking about that. If, One you of know, my favorites. Having seen everybody now, um, but I, I think that theirs might be my favorite. It's um, I think it, it shows off their strengths so well um and just uh yeah it's just so beautiful i really enjoy it and i feel like i there this is again i don't i'm not a nice enough of a nice dance technical person to be able to say but i think that their lifts seem a lot better and more comfortable this year than they did last year maybe that's my imagination but it seems like um they've gotten um a little better at that element yeah they've, they've always had interesting lifts um our coach used to show us their lifts all the time and, and was like, look at their lifts. Maybe you could take mm -hmm. something from there. Maybe you can do your own spin on it. Um, they've always had, because I feel like in, in the past few seasons, when it comes to lifts, um, couples usually tend to take easier lifts and mm -hmm. uh, just polish them to, to an extent where it just looks very, very easy. And judges are rewarding that really really much like you tend to see way more lifts that are a little bit easier today than um let's say for example tessa virtue and scott moyer they all they were known for their complex complex new mm -hmm. lifts and i feel like that trend kind of died off and um, people tend to take easier lifts and just as i said polish them to an extent where they just look very very light very easy and it just the judges are rewarding that and i think that um yeah. charlene and marco um choosing more difficult lifts mm -hmm. is is a very good thing and um yeah they're a little bit this year i feel like they're a little bit as you said a little bit um better on the lifts they, yeah, they, they it, just, it seems a little them. bit yeah like, they execute clearly... them better into the program i didn't have a mo like i sometimes watching them last year i had these a feeling of like you you're you're thinking okay here comes the lift and exactly they, they were preparing them and now you just now it's just so well built into the program when they're just you know they're skating and then suddenly there is a lift and yeah i feel like i feel like they, they've improved on that a lot mm -hmm. i also wanted to um acknowledge um two of the other teams that I've really enjoyed watching this year. Um, the French, uh, Luis yeah. Cianfilo, I thought did very well here. Um, and then um, also um, Emily and Ian, the Americans. I think um, it was great to see them do well. I appreciate um, both of their, uh, especially like the um, Nimiki Tapa uh, free dance that the Americans have and then I actually enjoy both programs, but I think especially, again, the free dance for the French team. Uh, they're both very interesting. Uh, so yeah. I was I, they're some of my favorite of the, like, younger up-and-coming teams, and I was glad to see um, them starting to, you know, make the second group be in that slightly higher place in the conversation. Yeah, I didn't really have them on the, on, on the radar when the competition started. But they they really surprised me, especially no, not especially with both programs actually. I I liked both of the programs of both couples. Um, they they really surprised me, especially the the the, the French couple, because um, last year I, I I I thought they were, you know, they were good, they were polished, they were uh, delivering very good stability in their programs. Um, but this year, I think they they really have that step up. Um, they really improved over the summer, and I think I think they're on a very 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 good road. 
Also, yeah. one team that I wanted to point out was uh, the Canadian team. Mm. The... Uh... Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, their free dance has to be one of my favorite free dances this year. <laughs> it's just so fun and entertaining to watch. Like, all of the elements are so well in character. Mm -hmm. Especially that last a dance lift where he just drops his drops his hands and, and she's just holding on on one hand and you think she's floating in the air it's so good their chore choreography and all the elements built into the choreography they just fit together so well and i i just i just wanted to appreciate them <laughs> yes yeah. that's definitely a program that's grown on me at first i was like okay and then this, I think I said like this week, this this has bought me, this program has bought me. I'm like very invested in it. The opening, um, well, the opening pose just like, it really tells the story and I really enjoy it. Yeah. I was so sad when, when the fall and the twizzle happened because yeah. it's, it's such a good program. And when, when such a devastating fall happens, it just disrupts yeah. the flow of the program and well it happens but i i i'm i still enjoy the program so much like even despite the fall it was it's i don't know something about the program just just catches me um the ice dance woke everyone up in the comments so thank you everyone <laughs> for commenting i've been i've been trying to scroll through and maybe find some uh to touch on points that um we also, I will mention shout out. out to Lana Lewis for being the first uh, British team to win a Grand Prix ever in history. Really? <laughs> yeah. Good that for is... them. Good for them. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and that's the thing. Like, I f sometimes I feel like we like we, we, people get really really passionate about dance, and I and I about everything and I get it and I get deciding that you don't think that you know they're they're as good or you don't think they're you know whatever but I feel like sometimes it goes into slightly uh mean territory and I want to just say mm -hmm. like that is not like let's not make it be about them as people they're clearly like very hard working and nice people and like I want to try to like disagree with the judges don't attack the skaters <laughs> exactly. exactly I want to be like we can I, it's very cool. I'm very happy for them. Even if I disagreed with the judging, that's okay. <laughs> also, skaters do have social media. They do read what you do post yes. and family members do as well. So just keep that in mind when you go and say something like very bad about you, about like them as people. Yeah. Yeah. Figure um, skating it's not fans. Necessary. Like, it's not necessary. Figure skating fans tend to say, really mean things sometimes mm -hmm. yeah and you have to remember that it's a judged sport it's the judges that are marking um you know we we all like have different opinions about various skaters and it's fine if you have an opinion about a skater but let it be about their skate their program their skating not about them them um yeah. want to introduce Izumi to Yay, um, yay. I'm here now. <laughs> what time is it for you? It's 4 51 a.m. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. <laughs> you are a champ. Also, this me did amazing coverage from NHK uh, for the whole weekend. So um congratulations on <laughs> it was yeah. great. Yeah, it was such a great arena, like a great event. Um, it was my first time going, so it was it was like a great a great first experience. <laughs> um, we are just wrapping up ice dance, but we'll circle back um, at the end to cover women as well. Um, so many, so many ice dance comments. Miriam saying, <laughs> "Happy for Luisi and Theo getting personal best in both programs, especially after her back injury." And a slow start to the season. Hope they can both continue to move up this season. Yeah. Um, Considering the improvements that um, Lopreva Brousseau have made to their scores, I don't think it's going to be a close competition between them yet, but I think it's getting closer. Yeah. 
Jonathan saying, um, you both share a brain. <laughs> um, so, oh my gosh, so many comments. I'm going to try and circle back to some because my mouse keeps skipping. So I think we'll move on to uh, the pairs event. Okay, um, so for pairs, we have in first Minerva, Fabian, Hasse, and Nikita Volodin. Uh, second, Lucrezia Vicari and Matteo Guarise. And third, Rebecca Ghilardi and Filip Filippo Ambrosini. And so this, I think, was like we were saying at the beginning, this was a really strong pairs event, um, especially after seeing kind of a struggle pairs event last week. Um, just it was really nice to see a lot of teams doing well here and having um, strong skates and um, kind of a fun, intense battle too for who was going to make the final. Uh, so I was that really this was one of the most exciting of the pairs events I think we've seen this year. For sure, for sure. I'm I'm so happy for for the Germans to have such a great debut um yeah I, I could i couldn't be more happy for them especially after last week's uh skate was which was a little bit off but um to, to be fair all all of the pair of skaters were a little off la uh, last last week um for them to be to, to be having two almost clean programs is, is I, I had such a blast watching them and i feel i feel like they're a perfect fit and they're definitely on 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 a on a good good way. And um, who knows? Maybe they'll 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 win uh, their next few competitions. I'll, I'll definitely be rooting for them. Um, maybe who knows? Maybe they'll be European champions. Maybe maybe even world champions. We'll see. Um, they're <laughs> definitely they're definitely a really strong team. And um, yeah, I, I hope the absolute best for them. Uh, it's gonna be it's gonna be a really interesting battle between them and the Canadians. Um, but yeah, we'll see. I need yeah, to look up and see if any team has has won worlds in their first season as a team. <laughs> that'd be <laughs> that would be, be really wild. Yeah, yeah. and they're it, they're incredible for especially given how new they are together. I think and seeing that they have right now both strong side-by-side -side jumps and strong pair elements. There are very few teams right now that are actually able to do both at a high level. And um, yeah, it's it gives them such a, and, it, and doing it with quality and everything, I think they're at such a, a strong place. And I said last week that I, I don't necessarily love either of their programs that much, but I think just seeing their quality makes them so enjoyable to watch. Yeah. I think this is a good point as well. They managed back-to-back -back wins in very different time zones as well. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Great job. Um, in terms Jonathan, of... Yeah. Sorry, Jonathan saying, love the pairs this week. So many great skates in the free. Whenever Nikita will be gunning for Diana and Maxim by Worlds, they're improving so fast. They really are. Yeah. Yeah. They're a really hardworking team. I've seen them train. I've seen them... Uh, I've seen them on competitions. They are really, really hardworking. So it's not like it, it, it just comes out of thin air. <laughs> of course. Definitely. Yeah, I um, really, I was going to say, I really appreciated um, Lucrezia and Mateo's um, short program this time. As I was looking at it, I was realizing that it's one of, it's for a team again that's relatively new together, I thought they had one of the better um, step sequences and just in general trying to go beyond the technical elements, which is so hard in the Paris short program. I felt like I could really tell watching it this time that they have like they have an ice dancer choreographing for them, that they were sort of trying to push themselves in that element more than I had seen them uh, do in the past. And I just it makes me wish that they had a different free skate because I feel like they it's just not I think they're capable of doing more on the PCS than that free skate is giving them um mode to do and you know it was choreographed by Barbara Fuserpoli and I love 
Barbara's weird ideas a lot of the time, but this one was, I, I just don't think it's, anyway, the cats is still not I, doing it. I think it's hilarious that Mateo said he's the one who chose cats. And that like stunned everybody. Like when we posted that quote, everyone was like, wait, he, he chose cats, not her? <laughs> 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 yeah. Um, and I thought um, Rebecca and Filippo seemed a little bit low energy to me here. And I was wondering if the jet lag or something was messing with them, though I think that they stayed in Japan between China and between China and here. So I don't know. I think they're a, a team that, again, I feel like really shines with um, the second mark and their quality of some of their elements. And it seemed like they didn't quite have as much um yeah just driver stamina in some of the program this time but that's just my sense i agree i think they probably felt a lot of pressure when he's competition because they because i mean she's not the best jumper and that can make it or break it for you especially in the pairs field especially when it's this close so i think they probably felt like any any wrong move and we could potentially lose this spot. So I think that's probably probably weighed on their mind a bit. They had great throws. Um and yes. um the and I, I do want to say that I feel like Rebecca is starting from just such a struggle in terms of her technique on her jumps, but she fights for it so hard. And I watched her do the um you know the three jump combination with the axles and just like I know everyone is working very, very hard and fighting for all of their jumps, but just I just feel like with her um, that she's um, she goes into it knowing that she doesn't have like the best chance of success, but is really, really fighting for it. And so I was very I'm always very happy when it's like, yes, you made it through three jumps. Yes. So I always have sort of extra cheering when it does work. Um, and then I also just wanted to say on the pairs that I really liked. Um, the um, Dutch team um, and I enjoy their free skate a lot and I love it. It was fun to see them um, be able to do really well here, a big improvement since the last time that I'd seen them. Um, and my only random comment on them that I wrote down was that I really think that they need to change their spin because um, Michelle really does not have uh, the flexibility in the camel to be able to he just looks very uncomfortable the whole time that that's happening. And um, it just, it, every time that I see them, I'm reminded of it. And so it's, it really, it's just odd that, that it, but it catches my eye every time. And I think, oh, that looks so uncomfortable. I wonder if there's another, uh, you know, another position or another option you could choose in the spin that would get you the same levels. Um, Cause it, uh, it distracts me every time I see it. Yeah, I think the chain is such an amazing piece of music and it seems to work so well for a skating program because it kind of like ebbs and flows and builds in the right places. It's such good music. And shout out to Daria because we've kind of watched this team kind of from their conception and when people weren't really paying them any attention and she's improved so much. Like she used to barely land her jumps, barely land her throws and she's nailing everything now. She's so good now. Yeah, and when they nail those jumps, like right, everything in that program is choreographed like right to the beat of the music. It just gives such a great impression. Um, I really love it. I'm excited to see them uh, see them at Europeans and see that live. Hopefully, I also wanted to talk about the Australian team because I feel like not enough people talk about how well of a trans transition they've had from juniors to seniors because yeah. they blend into the senior field so well. And yes, they may they may have not have had the best of skates um, in this Grand Prix as well as their prior Grand Prix. Um, I'm sure they would have hoped for a more cleaner skate and maybe even a a, a place on the podium. But I feel like um, despite the pressure going up into seniors from juniors, they they've managed really really well to hold their nerves and delivered two two solid programs on both Grand Prix. It's very unlucky for them to be placed fourth on both of them. But I feel like they have a really, really bright future in pair skating. Yeah. I agree. 
we had a tweet already to go of like the first Australian team to win a medal, and I was like, oh, I can't tweet it. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I saw a comment I really liked this one um, love the Diana story and Matteo still going strong obviously two uh, older skaters um, but still proving that they can you know go out there and compete and, and you know win medals and I think that's really awesome to see definitely um, this and I, comment... I would always to say Paris is the least appreciated of the disciplines, but uh, <laughs> I encourage you to get into it because the fact that it is smaller um, means that I feel like I have now gotten to have so many teams that I have really followed and watched developed and really, and because there's so many teams that are relatively new together or younger, the improvements that we're seeing sometimes competition to competition and season to season is really exciting. Um, so maybe not as many teams that that like, high level of polish that they're going to turn out a great performance every time but i think as a fan it's a really interesting discipline to follow um precisely because there's a lot of um doubt and changes a lot of the time um i saw this comment um is the european championship minerva and nikita's to lose uh it depends on how sarah and nicolo come back if they come back to, to the form they were on last year. I think if they were at their peak condition, they could probably beat them, maybe on PCS. Um, but that depends on if, if they're still struggling a little bit like they have been at the start of the season. Also the Georgians? Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> oh, right, right, I forgot about them. Because <laughs> I think they In got every like discipline. <laughs> They got like a really high score at their um at Warsaw. The challenge. Yeah. 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 Um but but technically def- that wasn't the challenger for the for the first part, so it didn't count oh, as a season right. best. <laughs> <laughs> um but I think it's gonna be very interesting to see um how they do at like a with a lot of pressure, like a lot of top senior teams. Yeah. Because they haven't had that yet. Like the the Warsaw Cup field was primarily primarily lower ranked teams who were trying to get minimums or trying to get world points. Yeah. So yeah, they they didn't have any competition there really. Yeah, Europeans and Worlds is going to be two very very tough competitions, very competitive, and I'm really looking forward to it. It's really going to depend on who is going to have a clean skate and who's like who's going to fall under the pressure. Um, I would really love to see all of them compete super well and deliver clean programs and just let the judges decide who's going to be on what place. But I think it's really going to come down to who's going to have the cleaner skate. Mm-hmm. I'm really excited for the Grand Prix final for Paris. I think that this there are, you know, these are six really good teams and that, you know, yep. right now, I, you know, Diana and, and Max and um, Minerva and Nikita, I think have, you know, have the edge um, between the two of them are likely winners, but, you know, anything could happen in some ways. I think it's going to be a really interesting um, event. Yeah. yeah. And I'm just so happy for two German Co- uh, two German pairs to be on one Grand Prix final. I think that's a really historic event. I, I'm not sure if that's ever happened before, but... It's really cool. I feel like I should know that, and I don't. <laughs> I should have seen the stat about that this weekend. <laughs> um, I think we'll jump to men, and I've seen a couple questions that I'll come back to once we finish talking about um, NHK Trophy. So the men, the winner is Yuma Kagiyama. Silver was Shoma Uno, and bronze was Lucas Britschke. Um, another. Marcus- uh, Another controversial podium here. <laughs> controversial <laughs> here. So I yeah. I want to know first from Izumi, um, what was it like to watch them both skate, and did you have an opinion on who should have won from watching them live? Um, what was it like seeing them skate first? It was amazing, and I think especially in front of a home crowd like that audience in the free was absolutely insane. And regarding who should have won, I actually haven't watched, I only watched Kagiyama live. 
haven't really, I didn't watch Uno live. I've seen the footage since. And I'm not a judge, so I really <laughs> cannot cannot be the one to decide whether those, you know, those deductions should have been taken. Um, I know a lot of the media in the mix zone were shocked, if that helps. Mm. Um, and I know also, like, being there when he was being interviewed by them afterwards, Shoma was, was not happy. Um, but... Yeah, I really, I honestly don't know. <laughs> I feel like we're so lucky that we get these two, like they're so, they were both so good. And so I was like, just, you know, from that perspective, um, I feel like we're really, really lucky to see that them both like that. And um, I just kept thinking the whole time about, um, one of the coaches that I interviewed recently who gave me a rant about how he hates the queue and thought and thinks that it should be abolished. And, and I was thinking, mm, yeah, I might, I might feel that way after this competition too. <laughs> oh my God. Um, especially Shoma saying like, I swear I've never done these jumps better in practice than I did them, you know, like I was, I'm paraphrasing, but you know, especially that kind of um, feeling that like, if these were cues, they've always been cues every other time too, um, or something like that. Uh, Just which, depends which tech panel you get. <laughs> and it's not that his jumps are like, like Yuma's jumps are, especially his quads are so amazing. Like they're better than- The top out is like incredible. Just top tier. Yeah. I feel like I'd still give Shoma the, the edge on the PCS and he had four quads and to Yuma's two. And I feel like those two things given, you know, with them both having very good performances should give Shoma <laughs> the edge. Though I think the short program felt very fair that Yuma was in the lead there, but I would have mm -hmm. had a bigger gap on the free, I think. Again, like I'm not saying that I can judge the rotation of the jumps. It just, from what I could see watching on TV, it seemed that way. Also, don't forget that Yuma had a fall in the free skate. Oh, right. I did forget yeah. that. And yeah, that also. Yeah, the that triple axle was a bad fall. Yeah. Because because that, that was the most surprising thing for me, that even with a fall, he still had enough to beat Shoma overall. Like, mm -hmm. I'm not a judge, and I'm especially not a judge for single skating. <laughs> but for me, even though I'm not the biggest fan of Shoma's jumping technique i feel like he should have won overall because it's just four quads compared to two quads and a fall on the triple axle yeah i don't know it's just for me shoma outweighs in the free skate more than uh yuma outweighed him in the short program and placement mm -hmm. aside i really feel like this was one of the best performances in some ways, one of the best performances that Shoma's ever given. It was yeah. a really yeah. fantastic skate, I think, from both a technical and an artistic point of view. The fact that he um, was able to just sort of throw in a quad as at the end um, <laughs> also is just like, wow, okay, sure, go for that. <laughs> um, uh, I love that he um, is basically just like trolling everyone now with the... Um, quad toe, triple toe, like being like, see, I'm doing it. I, I knew that that's why I was doing doubles. I knew if I did the triple, it would, you know, it wouldn't work, <laughs> but I'm doing it now. Are you happy? Um, kind of um, but the, I was also, it's, so just, you know, like all scores aside, I don't want to detract from what was I think a, just a really amazing free skate. And then um, I really hope that Shoma can take this and this sort of, competition with domestic rivals and just in general and see it as um you know an incentive to think well it's cool to be able to compete at you know with people who are you know pushing the boundaries as well and not see the scores from the judges as a disincentive toward competition because from things that he's said and things that Stefan has said it seems very clear that he is um if he hasn't decided yet, he may be in the process of deciding about whether this is his final season. Um, and so I, you know, I, 
I would be, I hope he keeps competing. I hope he, you know, feels like it is worthwhile to him to keep competing. Um, and like, not that he should get good scores just to keep him, you know, keep him in the field or whatever, but <laughs> um, I liked seeing that he always has such good things to say about his competitors, about Yuma and just, you know, being that again, he's frust who could be frustrated with the judges, but not with the skaters. And I feel like he's a great exactly. example of somebody who, you know, is vocal on both fronts. And I also, I also think we should, we have to appreciate the fact that he improved so much compared to last Grand Prix. Because when I saw him at last Grand Prix and I saw the free skate, I, I had that feeling that he was something about the program didn't feel right. He was really shaky. He, he didn't have the stability. So he really surprised me with this competition, especially the free skate, that he could deliver such a, you, despite the, the double toe. And I mean, he recovered and still did a quad toe as last element, I think, last, last yeah. jump at least. <laughs> And I don't know, that improvement from last competition to this competition is just mind blowing. Yes. Yeah. And I, I love shout out Lucas because I mean, if he'd have had a different assignment than France, he may well have had an opportunity to make the final. Um, because if he'd have been in Canada instead of France, he probably would have won the competition. Um, and he's just improved so much. This year, he's like, after getting bronze at Euros, he's really emerged as a strong competitor. And it's great to see him on the podium with two incredibly strong skaters. Yep. He's he's such an entertainer. Like, <laughs> not 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 only on the ice, but in person, too. He's <laughs> he, he's a really funny guy. <laughs> it's, it's, it's just really, really... Because he he's, trains at the same rink as, as I do. And so I see him daily and he's, he always lightens up the mood. Uh, he's always such, such an entertainer, both on the ice as well as off the ice. And, and you could see in the exhibition as well. He, he's just, he has just, he's got that sense, sense of, of entertaining the crowd like no one else does. And I, <laughs> I, I just think it's so good. <laughs> I love that you can tell that he's having fun and it just makes you want to ha be having fun with him and just brings you right along. Yeah. Um, I also wanted to give a shout out to, um, well, first to Dennis, who um, I thought did much better here than at Skate America. Still, the quads are not happening, but um, he didn't let that stop him from the rest of the performance. And I could see from the, um, the practice reports as well that he was really practicing all of his jumps and not just the quads and that he had been, you know, training the run-throughs and doing all of that. And so it seemed like, um, you know, overall, he was able to give a strong impression with those programs, which I was glad to see. And he just seemed like, you know, I, I interviewed him after Skate America and um, he seemed to be really sort of struggling to figure out what to do with that result and where to go next. And I'm glad that it seemed like here he was having a better time and having kind of found that grounding again. Um, and I definitely recommend if anyone hasn't watched the gala that the um, his exhibition program is really fantastic. Yeah, watching that live was incredible. Um, and I I think it was right before the Barbie exhibition program <laughs> or something like that. But like the contrast in the, <laughs> the vibe was like just insane. But yeah, Dennis came out and delivered that and the whole audience was silent and it was some of the best like art that I've ever seen. So yeah, definitely check that out if you haven't. Um, who else? We, need to talk we had um, the Selevko brothers, um, which yeah, still didn't go so well for Mihail, but considering yeah. Alexander only got the spot a week ago, he had a pretty good result. Yeah. Uh, we got a lot of love in chat for um, 
Dennis and of course his quad hope it people are hoping that he will hopefully one day get get there with it I mean um, he had it once <laughs> and the difference is that a couple of years ago it just wasn't happening ever it wasn't happening in practice it wasn't happening in competition now, like I've seen him do it a bunch of times. Like he can do it. It's just a matter of getting it into the competition. And so, like, you know, it doesn't make a difference to the scores to say, oh, but he can do it in practice. But it there was a point where he couldn't do it in practice and he was also trying to put it into the competition. And so that is a difference. <laughs> it's like um Amber with the I was gonna say like Amber's triple one day. <laughs> Um, <laughs> saw some love for Camden as well. Um, he placed fifth at both of his Grand Prix this year, fifth at both of his Grand Prix last year. Maybe next year will be the year, hopefully. Um, when he was at Worlds, didn't he come fifth then as well? Yes, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just always fifth, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I think he said he was aiming for he knows that he could have been on the podium if he'd skated clean or at least fourth place. So I think that's what was so frustrating for him because, you know, obviously he has, he has the ability to pull off great programs. We've seen that before. And I think he knew that that's not what happened here. Um, so yeah, he was, he was quite upset afterwards. The quad's getting very consistent though. I've been impressed that that, that was not always the case that he just, mm -hmm. but I, I think ever, I want to say oh, it's been four out of four, but I haven't gone to check, but it's certainly both short and free here. He had, um, the quad didn't look like it was a problem at all. So if that's getting more consistent, then hopefully the rest of it can as well. Yeah, I feel like he, he's definitely got a lot of potential. I think it's just, it's just a matter of his mental because um, after a clean quad, I think it was in the free. He he did the mistake of doing a double lutz or double something yeah. double lutz triple toe. I think, yeah. and yeah. I think if he gets his his mental right and um, just focuses on 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 working on that, um, he's definitely gonna gonna achieve great heights in the future. He also did have a very hard fall in the six minute warm up, um, and was like his arm was like he was not looking great with it during the warm up. I'm actually not sure if that affected him um, mentally or physically. He didn't say anything about it, but it could have been a factor. I'm not really sure. Yeah. Um, I love that someone in the comment uh, put about Lucas getting more and more people to participate in the uh, gala as the season goes on. Um, I, I like that. It should be the whole lineup by the time we get to Euros. Just Everyone's just gonna be there teach everyone the dance by the end of the season yeah i remember him talking to me um before going to his first grand prix he was like oh yeah i got this idea for for this exhibition number and i'm i'm really hoping because i i have this idea with with people like one person coming from this side of the ring and one person coming from that side of the ring but i'm not sure if if i find two people that are going to participate in this exhibition number with me <laughs> and i'm so happy that like now more and more people are coming to participate with him and you know he had this he had his doubts that even like one or two people are going to participate with him and now basically the whole lineup is is, is uh happy to participate with him it's just it's, it's really really fun i loved it and uh shout out to Alison for doing Alison well. doing well. <laughs> <laughs> love that um, um i also wanted to say that um I really liked um, Tetsuya Suboy here. I thought he did, um, you know, a really nice job, especially I thought his short program was really uh, enjoyable. And, you know, I feel like I saw him at, again, at, at Skate America and he had improved a lot since then. Um, so nice job for him kind of delivering under the pressure of the home Grand Prix. Um, which just reminds me that I also wanted to, when we were talking about pairs, I forgot to say this, but I just wanted to give a shout out to the Japanese pair team who had a really, really tough Rough street. And I just hope that they can like put that behind them because it's not representative at all of their potential as a team. I think that they're going to be able to do you know so much better than that. And soon it just was such a shame that it happened while they were 
you know, in this spotlight moment, but I really appreciated that the crowd was supporting them and um, backing them up there. Um, so I just wanted to acknowledge that uh, I think they had a, you know, that was a hard moment for them, but it'll be better. Um, I think we've covered almost all of the men. Um, before we go on to preview, I'll just, uh, is me because you were late. Um, is there any women or ice dance teams that you wanted to shout out? Um, for women, both the Koreans. Um, I know they were both frustrated with how they did. I know they could have done so much better and um, they put out great performances nonetheless. Like they are such great skaters and they have good programs. Um, so yeah, I really feel for them and it was, it was good to see them at least like I think take something positive away um and do pretty well you know um for the ice dance I think you shouted out the French team but they were so great um I can't remember which lift it is in the free um the free dance which is just stunning and so on the beat um but that was an amazing moment and such a moment for the audience as well um so yeah also, shout out to Luisia because I know I heard she spends two hours doing that hairstyle before bed, before bed, before the competition. I just, the, the commitment to that is incredible. <laughs> yes. Um, so now we normally just talk very briefly about uh, the next competition, which will be the Grand Prix final. And junior um, Grand Prix final and juniors, we won't forget about the juniors, of course. Um, and I did see, uh, uh, I don't know whose microphone that is. I don't know if it's mine or not. No. It's um, <laughs> so, ah, uh, Laura <laughs> says, Mikhail, have you practiced the worm for the Gala yet? Um, <laughs> funny question. Um, I I think I can do it. I'm I'm not sure. I haven't practiced it. A f funny thing that I can do is the reverse worm. I can do a backwards version of the worm. I don't know if anyone has done that before. I was just uh, I was doing random things. I was trying things out, and uh, one of my one of my friends said that like i was trying to to do that um like that that move when you when you, no 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 that move when when you when you lay on the back and you kick yourself back up oh, oh. yeah and, yeah mm -hmm. and 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 i was doing it and my one of my friends said to me that i i i do it like kind of weird and he he um he suggested to me that i was i should just continuously keep on doing it like kicking back up and then going back down and so i kind of have this like backwards worm <laughs> kind of thing so yeah maybe maybe i'll, I'll do that in the gala i don't know <laughs> <laughs> next next year we'll uh, i guess we'll see <laughs> um we do have a couple of questions for you before we do get to the preview um so who is your ice dance idol um my ice dance idol it's a tough question because there is so many good couples to choose from. Um, if I had to choose a couple that recently skated and recently stopped skating, I would have to choose Hubble and Donahue. I feel like they were such a phenomenal couple, both technical wise as well as components wise. I feel like um, they had the best uh, technique and skating skills out of all the top couples in, in the past few years. Um, I don't know, like just looking at them, looking at their skates, every single edge was so sharp and clean. Um, it, it was just phenomenal watching them. And, and I was so happy for them when they finally got their bronze medal at the, at the Olympics. Um, then who else? Tessa Virtue and Scott Moyer, undoubtedly maybe one of the greatest couples if not the greatest that has ever entered the ice <laughs> um yeah if i think back to like older couples i think um i'd have to say 
uh, I'm not sure how his partner is called, but Platov. Mm. Um, I like them. I, I, I like them so much. They, uh, I think they had a Carmen program. I'm not sure, but it was, it, it, it was one of my favorite programs of all time. And, um, also one of the older couples is Maiseva Manyankov. Um, it's, it's a Soviet, co Soviet couple. And my, my coach is always telling me to, to watch them because they, um, in his in his opinion they have the greatest looks on the ice like just <laughs> how they present themselves on the ice um yeah grushuk and plato thank you um <laughs> just the way how they present themselves on the ice is um phenomenal so yeah there's but there's so many good couples to choose from there's uh, gabriela papadakis is um who else is there is sinitsna katsalapov also a really really good couple um, I don't know. I, I, I couldn't, I couldn't tell you one exact couple who is my idol because just because there's so, so many good couples to choose from. Um, Jonathan saying, Dara called you the best hip hop dancer on the planet. <laughs> 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 so we'll be expecting to see some of those moves at your next gala. All right. All right. I hope I won't disappoint. <laughs> Um, I know we had uh, a couple other things earlier that Germany may be part of the next uh, World Team Trophy. That would be. I think we lag single skaters. Yeah, a little in bit. Germany. Yeah. Especially with Nicole taking a break potentially. Yeah. Yeah. Hiring whatever she chooses to do. Twenty twenty five. Yeah, it's the next one. Yeah. That took me way too long to work out, sorry. <laughs> Every two years. Yeah. So, Speaking yeah. of teams, I really was, as I was watching the Selefko brothers, I kept thinking um, if we could find them, uh, if we could find Alexander a, a, a Paris partner and then Arlet Lavandi <laughs> to dance, could I think Estonia could put together a, a team <laughs> event, um, but I don't know, I don't know who, I don't know who you would, would pair them up with, but that's a, uh, uh, a fun parlor game for for somebody to to do. Um, <laughs> Love that. Um, so I think we'll jump into our preview now. Um, like the rest of our stream, there is no order to this. We just sort of shout out names that we think might do well um, <laughs> from the list. So I think we'll start with Senior. Um, and mm -hmm. honestly, that could be anyone's game for the men. Oh, yeah. I mean, whoever does the best on the day. <laughs> yeah, we have uh, Adam, Ilya, Cow, Yuma, Shoma, and Kevin. That is... It's a very strong lineup. It is stacked. Yeah. <laughs> Adam has, yeah. has had such a good season. He's undefeated, I think, this season, right? Yeah. He's not yeah. lost a single competition. Yep. And when he knew he was going to win, he'd throw in a backflip for fun. Yeah, I, I, I love that. I love that, especially at, at Shanghai Trophy when he knew he was he was going to win. He just threw in the backflip in his choreo sequence. I was I was shocked. It was it was oh, yeah. so funny watching live. Like, like, did he? Just I do don't it? care about the deductions. I'm just gonna do backflip. I'm just gonna entertain the crowd. I don't even care. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is no room for error. And I think one of the exciting things about Grand Prix Final, obviously we've seen so much different judging across all of the Grand Prix. This is going to be the first time that we really see them, same panel, whatever happens, happens. Mm -hmm. And I think, especially for dance, that's going to be very interesting. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. We can talk about dance now and just move on to that one. <laughs> Sorry, I, I, I'm just so interested to see how Marjorie and Zach will score here. Um, yeah. I'm interested to see what's going to happen with Lionel Lewis because I know they're supposed to be doing nationals next week. So to go straight from NHK to nationals to the Grand Prix final, traveling back and forth from China, well, Japan, Japan to here to China, I don't know how that's going to help them. <laughs> they're going to be exhausted, surely. That's rough that they they still have to do nationals. Yeah, you'd think they'd get let off, but I mean, Robin Cousins was still like tweeting saying, "We'll see you at nationals next week." 
<laughs> so I guess they're going. Yeah. <laughs> um, out of the um, dance teams that have made the final, um, who's who's got your favorite eighties program? Eighties program. Ooh, that's tough. That's that's really really tough. Um, my coach is gonna hate me for that, but um, I think Marjorie and Zachary have a really really nice Michael Jackson program. Um, I feel like it suits them so well. It's it's really they they've got that Michael Michael Jackson energy, and I feel like n not really many couples would be able to deliver a Michael Jackson program as well as they do. Um, so, but I, I'm not sure if that's my favorite 80s program. It's definitely, it's my favorite Michael Jackson program and it's a really, really good 80s program. But uh, for favorite 80s program, ooh, it's, that's so hard. Um, I'd probably have to go Piper and Paul. I don't know. I, I, I th something about them just screams eighties, and and yeah, I, I like out of all the all, all the eighties rhythm dances, I feel like the theme eighties just suits them the most. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> any other dance thoughts for the Grand the Senior uh, Grand Prix? I'm really interested to see how, how the podium's going to go because I feel like, I mean, Piper and Paul have the highest score so far this season, but that's also Skate Canada home inflation potentially score. Um, and Lionel Lewis have the second highest score, which is kind of insane. Surprising. Um, yeah, like when you have like the world champions in the mix and stuff, um, you wouldn't expect <laughs> Lionel Lewis to have the second highest score. Um, so I feel like it could go any way. Yeah. But it's Obviously all across like different Grand Prix. Yeah. yeah, now yeah, they're on yeah. the same competition. So yeah. it's going to be really, really, really interesting to see them all compete together on one competition. Um, I Honestly, I have no idea who's going to take it. Um, it's really going to depend on, 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 on the skates and on the judges. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But... Um, my favorites are probably going to be Piper and Paul just because I I think their free dance is so unique. Like I, mm -hmm. I, I've never heard such a free dance music before and something about them just, I don't know, it, it, something about them just catches me. Like even, even those small details like that little stop during the twizzles and the free dance because they're doing their first set of twizzles, then they're stopping and then they're going right into the second set of twizzles like details like these just 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 make a program so much more refined and yeah we'll we'll, we'll see but i i have no idea who's going to take it mm -hmm. um shall we jump to the women's event um, i mean have... obviously kyori is probably the favorite but she was probably the favorite last year and that didn't come to fruition there so <laughs> yeah i feel like it's been a long time i mean i know it's nothing compared to the juniors but i feel like it's been a long time since we've seen some skaters i was just thinking that about um both isabeau and um Ilya, who were like had weeks one and three and that feels like yeah, a long time done my <laughs> so I'm, I'm kind of i feel like I'm now interested in how they will stack up against some of the skaters that competed more um, more recently. Um, and I know Ilya I also, said he's like not doing the quad axle, but would he? If it's if it's such a, a, an intense feel, would he do it? Yeah, I'm not sure because I feel like he's a quad axle should be rewarded more than it yeah. is being rewarded because. Uh, the base value being like what one point more than a quad lutz, but yes, it exactly. like the quad axle being so much more challenging than the quad lutz, and I feel I think it drains a lot of stamina. Yeah, like mm -hmm. doing that quad axle and landing it, I think is so exhausting, and risking 
risking all of that for one point extra might not be worth it. Yeah. So, and I, I think he, he said in, in interviews that the base value is just a, a big turnoff for him. Yeah. Yeah, he definitely has a. They have, they have a whole talking point campaign going. It's around. almost like he's like. It's almost like he's like holding holding the job hostage. He's like, I'm not going to do it until you increase the base value. <laughs> and good for him. It, then I might bring it back. <laughs> um, I am super interested to see how. Um, Hannah and Rion do with the final. I feel like it's a real opportunity if either of them, you know, do well here to try to set themselves apart going into nationals. Um, I mean, obviously it wouldn't be decisive, but um, if they're able to kind of get that step ahead, there's so many strong Japanese women, but they're all, other than Kaori, there, there haven't been many who have been like cleanly consistent this season. And so it still feels very up in the air who those spots will go to. And doesn't uh, making the Grand Prix final kind of have some weight in regards to making for continents and worlds? Like um, Rinka did not have a good nationals last year, but still has... made the team because she had yeah. such a good first half of the season. I can't remember all the criteria, but it definitely does yeah. have some weight. Um, like they they have a formula, um, yeah. Um, so then to pairs, uh, we have Diana and Maxim, Minerva and Nikita, Leah and Trent, Sarah and Nico, Annika and Robert, and Rebecca and Filippo. Sorry, I was just... point, probably a bit of a two horse race between. Diana and Max and um, Minerva and Nikita, but the the other the other teams can obviously still be like chomping at their heels if any mistakes are being made. I just realised there's two Canadians, two Germans, two Italians. Yeah, it's a great it's a great right. sum up. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully, they got a deal on those flights. <laughs> yeah. And it's funny too because I feel like they're. Um, you know, when we were looking at this early on, it seemed like there were, you know, there was going to be a Japanese team, there were going to be strong Americans, they're going to, you know, but no, it's, it's it really, no. <laughs> um, those three. And I'm really interested to see how um, the Germans and then Diana and Max uh, do up against each other. Um, yeah. Yeah. I think it'd be really, I think that's going to be interesting. And then, yeah, I think anyone who has a, good skate has a you know has a good chance here it's probably the, the discipline that feels the most up in the air um you know trent and leah just keep improving competition to competition yeah so there's there's a lot of a lot that could happen here and i just want to say i see the commentary in the chat about the lack of um depeche mode and duran duran um rhythm dances and i agree i have been yes. Frustrated that, as far as I know, nobody did um, "Hungry Like a Wolf" as a part of their rhythm dance, and that feels like a mistake. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> um, trying to pull up the junior uh, Grand Prix final. Um, so for the men, we have. Uh, no, I've lost the list. One second. Sorry. I, I can do it. I've got it here. Don't Please. <laughs> My Google have, just uh, crashed. <laughs> we have Francois Pito. We have Rio Nakata, uh, Hyung Yong Kim, Jahyon Lim, Adam Pangara, and Daniel Martinov. I'm very excited for Adam Pangara. I'm, um, I'm so happy he made the final. <laughs> I was like, when he had the slightly worse uh, second event, it was very much doing the math of. Okay, how is he going to make the final? <laughs> yeah, I'm. Um, I'm interested to see here how um, both of the Koreans I really enjoy, and um, I think they're some of my like bright hopes for the future, but maybe not quite there yet in terms of all of the technical content. So if they have great skates, it could be could be good, but we'll have to. I think I would say the front runner is probably Jahion. Um he did win mm. a challenger and I think he beat Nika Agadzi mm. to win that challenger. Mm -hmm. So I would 
put him potentially in first place. I'm interested to see if Francois Peter maybe tries a quad. I know he's been training it. I don't think it's quite ready yet. Um, but I think I saw him do it in practice, but it wasn't there. And then he tried it in competition, and it definitely wasn't there. Um, so Does France have three Euro spots? I think they do. I'm, I was kind considering of considering Adam won. I would imagine they do. I was they, wondering they if there was going to be a push if um, if he's trying to be in the conversation for that third. Yeah, spot. I think it's very close between him and Luke. Um, I couldn't believe. Yeah. Um, Amy's saying the Junior Grand Prix feels like it does. It feels like. Yes. When did yes. Does it should also feel like a long time ago? <laughs> <laughs> feels like a long time ago. <laughs> yes. Uh, men have three French spots and three Italian spots. Um, I'm just happy for Francois to finally have a good season, at least good start yes. of the season, because he's been very, very unlucky the past few seasons. Yeah. So I remember he went to Worlds and, and had didn't a lot of potential. For... I didn't, didn't even make the free skate. And yep. I was like, oh, no. <laughs> um, we'll do the women. So we have Mao Shimada, Jia Shin, Aminaki, Rana Gizano. Uh, Yu Song Kim and Min So Kwan. Um, Ami, we know, has had an injury, um, which is a shame from the past. I think she had to withdraw from either sectionals or regionals. And then. She had a not great nationals, junior nationals. Yeah. Mao is, I think, is still trying the quad, and I would suggest she not do that. But, you know, she's probably still going to try it. Um, which I think might bring it a bit closer between her and Gia, maybe for the win, if she's uh, still trying jumps that she's not going to land. Um. <laughs> yeah, once again, it's really going to depend on who's going to deliver a clean skate. And... Yeah. Absolutely. Um, pairs, um, Metalkina and Baruvala, Ariana Ken and uh, literally, pardon my French, uh, La Liberté Laurent, um, <laughs> Sariova, Kovta, Flores, Wang, uh, Kemp, Elizarov, and De Roche and Drasha. I think we know who the winner is. We know who's going to win. <laughs> <laughs> we know who's going to win. That's a foregone yep. conclusion, unless something really drastic happens and somebody is injured and withdraws or something. Um, so yeah, it's more like who's going to be on the podium with them. <laughs> um, I'm really interested to see how the three Canadians do up against each other. Um, yeah, I think they're all um, very talented um, with different strengths, and so um, it's really exciting for the future of Canadian pairs of pairs in general. I think that they have such strength right now. So I'm interested to see how they've improved since. Um, we last saw them, and then how they're going to compare amongst each other. I'm hoping um, Sarova Hobta are more healed from the injury that was plaguing her during the Junior Grand Prix. You know, that stopped them from being able to challenge themselves with some triple throws and stuff. Um, they have so much potential, and I'd love to see them reach higher ground with their content. And Flores Wang are also really fun not to like yeah. not mention them. They're, they're a great fun team. <laughs> yeah, agreed. And then um, Ice Dance, we have <laughs> Lester, uh, Mark Lowe, uh, Grim, and Svitsky, uh, Sichenko, Kilikov, Pinchok, and Pogrelayev, Pogre uh, Pedersen, and Chen, and Fragi, and Fonio. Um, <laughs> and not to like suck up or anything, but uh, <laughs> Dario and you uh, have one of my favorite free dancers. They like nailed it last season, and I think again this season. So, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> What's yeah, it been like for your training since the Grand Prix finished? Um, I'm really happy that we didn't have any more super hard incidents since since the grand prix 
because um, I still got that scar on my hand. Oh, oh no. no. Oh, wow. Uh, from the blade. But um, yeah, we've, we've been we've been working a lot. Um, I think we we've had two pretty good skates at the Dennis 10 Memorial. Um, right after the Dennis 10 Memorial, we had a local competition here where we delivered even even better skates. And I think our stamina is finally catching up with uh, what we have hoped for, because we were definitely lacking stamina in both the Grand Junior Grand Prix assignments. Um, yeah, and I think we can. We're finally in a a good spot where we can deliver our programs um, to the to their fullest extent if we have a good day. <laughs> Let's put it like this, um, because and we I hope feel you like. Have a good day. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, because I feel like at at both the junior grand prix we um, were kind of not necessarily ready yet to deliver both the programs really well. Um, first Junior Grand Prix, because I was ill literally two days before we flew off to the competition. Um, then second Grand Prix, the incident with my hand, um, it just it just broke off the, the, the rhythm uh, of um, preparation for the, for, for the Junior Grand Prix. But now we've had uh, several weeks of nonstop training, nonstop practice. And I think we're finally in a good spot to present our programs as we wanted them to to look like. So yeah. Okay. Good. Glad to hear it. A lot of people wishing you luck. Um, Amy said, "Saw you and Daria uh, live last year. Good luck." Um, Thank you so this much. Yeah. <laughs> um, Jonathan hoping for you on the podium. Thank you. <laughs> um, yeah, I also saw another, uh, this is the one, Russell saying, love the different approach uh, to your Carmen free dance. Thank you. Yeah, we, we've, as well as in the last season, we've taken really popular music, especially arguably worn out music in figure skating. Because both mm -hmm. um, both the Nutcracker as well as Carmen have been used very very often in figure skating, but we tried to take both those pieces and um, like kind of take a new approach to the music, as well as kind of also a, a spin on the music itself, because it's not classical Carmen and 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 it's it's not been classical uh, Nutcracker last season, um, so it, it's kind of become like our theme now that we take like popular music um take our own spin on the music and kind of do different approach and i think it it, it suits us pretty well and um yeah we'll see maybe we'll keep on keep on working um in this direction maybe we'll take take a new completely new direction next year um yeah we'll see what the future holds for us Yeah, they've definitely, uh, Anna and I have uh, spoken about this on the past, but it's like sometimes sometimes classical music, like the same piece can get very boring. So when you have a different take on uh, a piece like you do, it just like keeps you hooked. It keeps you interested in wanting to watch the rest of it. Yes, that play between like what what's familiar and then what's unexpected. Um, it's like, it's more interesting than either something totally familiar or something totally new. It, I think it's really cool. I'm excited to see more of it. Thank you. Um, so that is NHK wrapped up. That's our preview done. Mikhail, we are gonna let you go because it's we're coming up to two hours <laughs> and we always do this and we always keep people on for way too long. Um, so thank you so much for your time. No, thank you for having me. It was very, very, very enjoyable. Of course. We're, we're happy to have you back anytime. Um, good luck in really China cool. and good luck with the rest of your season. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Um, so now we are going to continue on with fantasy skating. Um, <laughs> So, I love that, like, last couple of minutes, I was just, like, sat here with my cat just, like, grabbing onto my arm. I'm like, <laughs> let go of me, please. 
<laughs> um, so we have oh, fantasy skating. It was okay. Let me face this. <laughs> Ellie sent a message saying that there's not, not a lot of not winners. Sure. <laughs> not sure there's ever been this few people <laughs> to have won. Yeah. Um, um, I will say I don't. I don't have the statistic. I don't know if anybody has ever won the event from Group Four before, because we had Ava in Group Four and she won the competition. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah um but we will the women continue to men we just i think we were yeah. just need that to have a bag <laughs> <laughs> um so congratulations to the three people who correctly predicted <laughs> who uh, nailed it how how did women? you what is your how did goal? you nail this <laughs> um so congratulations uh the men we have noted friends of um the stream the run through um team who won men so congratulations to them <laughs> um incredible job and the irony of uh ashwag's uh hip hip chin chin truther <laughs> very appropriate i think mm -hmm. um pairs more people won pairs so congratulations if you want pairs. <laughs> um, do you want to pause to I can't remember if I did or not, but uh, no, no. I I truly I think I did absolutely terribly this week, but Ellie said I didn't, so I'm very confused. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely didn't win dance because <laughs> I did not pick Fair Gibson. <laughs> I picked all of my, I decided I was so bad at fantasy, I was going to pick all of my sentimental favorites this time, which um, did me did me actually decently in women, but not in any other category. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. So yeah, nobody got Full marks. If full marks of 3,159, the highest somebody got was 3,125. But to get that much is it's amazing. Yeah. Incredible job. <laughs> <laughs> so, men overall. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know how I'm second. How am I second? <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. Um, I love that Step on Me's back. That's such a great name. It's, it's an iconic moment. I appreciate that the Grim City <laughs> Future World Champs is still in the leaderboard. <laughs> Very appropriate this week. Celebro's world domination, well, not this time, but at least you were there. <laughs> <laughs> One step closer, <laughs> we'll get there. <laughs> Romsky Raccoon is also a great name. I don't know what that's based on, but it's a great name. There's this, the Rocky Raccoon song. Rocky now, I, I really don't know how I'm first overall. I I don't understand. <laughs> I, I quite literally don't understand how I'm there. But uh, I, I, I appreciate the fact that I'm there. I don't know why I am. <laughs> All of your your skating knowledge just somehow is magically apparently, <laughs> yeah. Because I I'm just picking things, and every week I go, I think I did really badly, except for like I can't remember if it was week one or two where I think I, I basically nailed it. But every week I think, God, I've done terribly. Especially this week, I thought I'd done terribly, but maybe the people who were above me did really, really terribly. <laughs> no offense to those people. <laughs> Oh, hey. Laurie, that's a great name. Congratulations. <laughs> um, so that is another stream done. Um, until the final uh, in two weeks, we are still organizing guests. Um, almost, almost getting there. 
We are going to have guests and they're going to be exciting and we will be able to announce them soon. <laughs> um, when, when they are final, we will be able to announce them. <laughs> Um, yeah. Thank you, everybody, for joining again, and thank you to those who are signing up and getting, um, and those of you who signed up for our, our Patreon, that was also lovely to see after last week. Thank you so much, it was. and um, yeah, definitely excited to see. Um, thank you again to those who got us over the thousand mark in the subscribers. Yes. Uh, please like. Um, I don't know if we had any ads on this or not, because obviously we're stuck in here. So uh, I don't know if ads have appeared at some point or not. No one's mentioned anything. So. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, we'll leave you with this teaser guest. Potentially plural. guest plural. We, we will see. <laughs> and uh, we'll see you in a couple of weeks. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye.